All right. Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us. My name is Michael Dockery, um, Chief Strategist of Design Industries, a Latvian Solution Partner. Um, today, we've got Jackson and Charlotte from AdTech, who are going to give us some updates regarding um, their key products. Um, Jackson, would you like to? Absolutely. Thanks for having me today, Michael. I am Jackson Alexander. I'm the partner manager here at AdTech. Um, I will be walking you through one of our two products today. And we also have my colleague Shardal on the line. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Shardal. I'm the product marketing manager for uh, AdTech products, including uh, Excellent Able and Unstoppable, uh, which we are presenting today. So I'll be taking you through uh, Excellent Able. Right. All right, guys, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen for you all and walk you through Unstoppable. All So um, Shardell and myself are both um, with AdTech and we're a Platinum Elastin Solution partner here in the US and in the APEC region. And for over a decade, we've been helping organizations with their DevOps needs, as well as doing custom development of our own products. Uh, we've created two best in class plugins, um, as well as a fully managed and supported hosting solution called Code Factory. So, I will be walking you through Unstoppable, which helps organizations meet their accessibility needs for the visually impaired when they're using Atlassian products. And then Excellent Table creates dynamic spreadsheets in your Confluence instance. And my colleague Shardul will demonstrate that tool for you following this presentation. So to talk specifically about your region, Standards Australia acted to promote digital accessibility for all Australians by releasing a new standard in 2020 titled Accessibility Requirements for ICT Products and Services. Now, while the standard is voluntary, it provides deeper guidance regarding what organizations can do on a practical level to help support accessibilities in many areas of ICT. So what are these new Australian standards? The Accessibility Requirements for ICT Products and service Services designated ASEN 301-549-2020 provides organizations with the minimum standard for the accessibility of ICT products and services such as hardware, software, and other technologies that people may interact with, such as kiosks. It also formally recognizes version 2.1 of the web content accessibility guidelines, which now aligns these requirements with the standards used by the European Union. Now, there's a very human element in the motivation to create tools such as Unstoppable beyond just government mandates and the fact that people should think about inclusivity when building out the software for their own employees and for the, the customers that are coming to their sites. So here in the United States, there's seven and a half million Americans that have a visual disability. And in Australia, there's over 600,000 people with visual disabilities. Now, there are a lot more visually impaired developers and people in the workforce than you may realize. So just in the developing developers world alone, in 2017, Stack, Overdo, oh, Stack Overflow did a survey of 64,000 developers and found that 1% were actually visually impaired. So around one in every 100 developers is likely to be blind or have a visual disability. In the US and around the world, there is a big shortage of software developers to design, build, and maintain the software that is increasingly critical to our day-to-day -day lives. And at the same time, currently software developers are a largely homogenous group. And so diversifying this group could really yield significant benefits. And people who are blind or visually dis visually impaired are really great candidates to fill this shortage and diversify the software development workforce. Since software is not an inherently visible artifact, a lack of sight should not prevent blind software developers or put them at a disadvantage, as long as they have accessible tools. 
on people's use of screen readers, which are programs that verbalize text on the screen, suggests that textual source code used to implement most software should be accessible to blind developers. And in fact, blind developers' compensatory abilities, such as enhanced serial memory, often gives them a significant advantage over sighted developers. They are often some of the most creative and efficient developers in any organization. Um, Unstoppable itself is compatible with JAWS, NVDA, Window Eyes, and most recently, Apple's voiceover technology. So how does Unstoppable help a company and its visually impaired employees? It's a full function plugin designed to allow your core Atlassian tools to meet 508 compliance and AY11 compliance with WCAG 2.1 standards and NVDA compatibility. This diagram here is showing you the typical architecture of Atlassian software and, is, and how it interacts with a screen reader. So you would have your JIRA or Confluence and the screen reader is essentially trying to translate the code to the end user. Unstoppable acts as an intermediary between the screen reader and your Atlassian applications. It cleans up the code, it adds incompatible ARIA, also known as ARIA tags, and makes the applications more accessible to the screen readers. So the screen reader can really only read what the application provides it to read. And unfortunately, there's not a smooth bridge between JIRA, for example, and a screen reader natively. And Unstoppable is that bridge that enhances the user's experience. Unstoppable is designed to work in the browser. It's fully compatible with all of the popular screen readers that I just mentioned. And a huge advantage of the tool is the auto detection of a user. And so let me talk a little bit more about that last point. Auto detection of a user is particularly important. Unstoppable automatically recognizes a visually impaired user and prompts them to enable Unstoppable. And this allows the user to be fully independent while navigating their tools without the need to ask a colleague to initiate or to turn on the program. You can add an accessibility group to your JIRA or Confluence, but the purpose of this tool is to make it so that that's not necessary. Before I play this video, I want you to know that you're gonna be hearing um, a JAWS screen reader. And this is gonna be a video illustrating the automatic detection of a visually impaired user working with their Atlassian tools. Dash 100 tab, toggle swim lane visibility tab, you end sprint dash 3 tab, start sprint button on the bit tab, collapse menu link tab, view summary of a sideboard tab, you end dash 16 link tab, you end dash 33 link tab. So as you can see, it takes a little less than 20 seconds for Unstoppable to recognize that a visually impaired user is on JIRA or Confluence, and then prompts them to enable Unstoppable. And it does this by recognizing the use of a screen reader and the typical behaviors and keyboard shortcuts that are used by a visually impaired user. A JIRA or Confluence screen has a lot of links and sections on any given page. And as a user, you of course wanna be able to navigate to all of those links in those areas. Unfortunately, in out-of-the-box JIRA, navigation to some of these links and sections is difficult, if not possible. So this video is going to show you how JIRA navigation behaves without Unstoppable and just a screen reader turned on, and then how it behaves with Unstoppable. So the user here wants to link two issues, which can be done by navigating to the More button, and then you scroll down to Link Issues. But what you're going to end up see seeing is that without Unstoppable, the navigation of the native screen reader does not navigate to all the links. It essentially stops halfway down the drop-down menu, and then it won't go any further. Edit link, edit this issue. Comment link, comment on this issue. Assign link, assign this issue to more collapsed visited. Application, log time one of one, log work one of five, addicts. Start track, view work log, agile board, rank to top, rank to bottom, creates effort, attach files. So as you can see there, it was not accessibility navigating the dialogue. And here the, access the accessibility dialog pops up. Um, and from here on, you're going to see that Unstoppable gets enabled. And then you'll see that all of those unavailable links are made accessible with Unstoppable.
like you are trying to enable unstoppable accessibility functions. Unstoppable helps to make Jira act. Edit link edit this issue. Comment link comment on this issue. Assign link assign this issue to more collapsed visited sub menu. Application logged log work one of five add expense to plan time three start tracker for view work logs agile board one rank to top two rank to bottom three creates effort test one attach files one voters one of three stop watching two of three watchers three of three create subtask one of two convert to subtask two of two create branch one move one of link two of six clone three of six labels four of six so as you can see, common Jira tasks like cloning issues, linking issues, creating subtasks, et cetera, are much simpler to navigate to using Unstoppable. And in this case, all of the links that were, that were not accessible with the native screen reader become accessible with Unstoppable. There's also numerous keyboard traps in Confluence, um, and it often stops users from doing simple tasks if they're visually impaired. For example, it's really difficult to select the options for a create from template button in Confluence. So I'm gonna show you a video of the sort of loop that ends up happening with the typical keyboard commands that you would use to navigate this menu screen. Elements list dialog to C R E A T E. Create ten, create nine on, create ten on thirty nine level zero. Create from template without unstoppable test confluence. Google Chrome. Create, create button. Close link. Blank. Click, create button. Blank page. Start with a blank page. Edit blank. Help create heading. Edit blank. So as you can see there, it essentially gets stuck on the blank page piece, and it doesn't allow you to fully navigate that that menu piece. When you enable Unstoppable, Elements you're going to see how that acts. -E Create from template 10 on 43 level 0. Now Unstoppable is enabled test confluence combo box test collapsed. Template blank. So with Unstoppable enabled, the user is able to overcome those keyboard traps and they can easily select the items like blogs or any of the other templates that you may have in Confluence. Apart from that, you may have also noticed a slight change in the UI tags, like the create from template button that makes it easier for a screen reader to read that Confluence page. Unstoppable doesn't only provide smoother navigation, it also makes the code more accessible to the screen reader by fixing incompatible ARIA tags. Um, a quick example um, of a simple create issue screen will illustrate that. So on the left, I've displayed the buttons of the element list dialog box that you might see when you open a create issue screen. And in some scenarios without unstoppable, buttons like the attachments button and the create issue button are not picked up by the elements list dialog box. And so this means that the attachment button and the create issue button essentially become invisible to, uh, to the user. This is a screenshot of that same menu screen with unstoppable enabled. And the create button becomes visible. The upload attachment is now treated as a button. And along with this, we've also improved the way that a non-visual user can add or remove labels and components. As with unstoppable, the labels will show up as a multi-select list rather than a suggestion-based text field. So these improvements um, at a high level cover how Unstoppable enhances the accessibility of JIRA and Confluence for a visually impaired user. Um, Unstoppable does also add a large set of shortcuts in Confluence in both view and edit mode. So in view mode, the, the basic actions such as text alignment, merging cells, or adding rows becomes really difficult to execute with the native keyboard shortcuts. And so Unstoppable provides you a set of shortcuts that are basically needed to you know, uh, hold complete control of your edit pages in Confluence. And similarly in view mode, the, add shortcuts say, the added shortcuts um, save the user time by quickly navigating to actions such as comment, save for later, or export. A few upcoming features uh, that we are very excited about um, is uh, contrast. So Atlassian accessibility for the colorblind will um, make uh, it available for colorblind users as well. 
Um, and there's a much like larger percentage of the population that are colorblind. I think it, it's pretty much one in every eight people is colorblind. Um, so those improvements are gonna make Unstoppable useful to a much larger section of your employees. Um, another feature is auto captions. And auto captions essentially help screen readers read the content in an image. So imagine there's a man standing on a beach and looking at the sunset. What this feature would do if there was no metadata attached to that image is it would essentially analyze the image through machine learning and read out to the user, a man is on a beach looking at a sunset. Um, and then also uh, we now have Unstoppable available for Jira service management. Um, whenever you purchase Unstoppable for JIRA. And with that, that wraps up um, all of the updates on Unstoppable, and I will pass it over to Shardle. Thanks, Jackson. Uh, hi, everyone. So I'll be taking you through uh, Excellent Table. So let me just share my screen and uh, get the presentation ready. So I'll be just discussing Excellent Table, uh, which is a dynamic and collaborative editing uh, spreadsheet that sits right inside your Confluence. Uh, so why exactly do, as a, as a Confluence user, you need an app like uh, Excellent Table? Any documentation space has a need of a tabulation system. Uh, but the standard tables in Confluence are a bit limited in functionality, um, collaboration, and connectivity, which makes many of our uh, Confluence documents pretty restricted. And as experienced Confluence users, we tend to adopt one of the top two workarounds. We either try to continue working on Confluence tables till an edit or an advanced feature is needed, which makes uh, maintaining data quality a bit hard, or uh, we create tables in a spreadsheet software like MS Excel and uh, paste that into Confluence. So both these approaches are a bit restrictive if, you're not, uh, if your knowledge base is large, uh, if your collaboration amongst teammates is needed, or you quickly need to make uh, active edits inside Confluence. So one of the major questions you can ask is, uh, how integral is your documentation, uh, how in integral is Confluence to your documentation process? And if the answer is that it is very integral, then a spreadsheet software that uh, something like um, Excellent Table is needed. And we created Excellent Table with three basic things in mind. Um, the first thing is uh, we needed a spreadsheet software that was native. That means when you, uh, you are able to edit the complete spreadsheets right inside Confluence without leaving it or switching <laughs> tabs. The second thing was it needed a rich formatting in formula sets, um, multi-sheets, uh, and so that you don't need to retrain yourself in using Excellent Table. Um, if you know your Google Sheets or your MS Excel, you should be able to work on Excellent Table as well. And third is uh, collaborative editing. Since um, Confluence is a collaborative tool, Excellent Table also needed to have collaborative editing uh, so that multiple users can edit at the same time. So basically with these three things, we have created a tool, uh, Excellent Table. And uh, right now we have over 600 organizations um, that trust Excellent Table, uh, trust the data with Excellent Table. And uh, we have around 10% uh, of the Fortune 500 companies currently using Excellent Table. All right, so let me just uh, go into a bit of key features of uh, Excellent Table and let's start with some of the basic features of Excellent Table. Uh, so this is basically uh, what a normal conference page would look like. Uh, you have a heading and uh, some text. So just you, you can just uh, add, as a macro insert Excellent Table. And the first thing you'll notice is the Excellent Table looks and feels very similar to your uh, normal spreadsheets. You have same number of rows, columns, uh, cells, uh, cell heights. Uh, you can adjust rows and columns. Uh, you, you can insert formulas. And uh, if you have an existing spreadsheet, uh, a CSV or an XLSX, you can import it as well in right inside your uh, present, uh, right inside your Excellent Table. 
So once you have imported, uh, excellent table would be able to import things like uh, fonts. Uh, it would be able to import things like uh, numbers, formulas, uh, which cells are merged, which cells are unmerged. Uh, so essentially, basically, if you're familiar with uh, any tool of like Excel or spreadsheet, uh, sorry, Excel or Google Sheets, you should be able to use uh, excellent table as well. Uh, once you have uh, tried uh, making anything, you can uh, just apply filters and uh, do cert certain smaller edits, publish changes. And these changes now would be visible in your uh, Confluence page as well. And one thing you might notice is the uh, at the top, it still as nablod.tech.com, which means uh, our uh, page hasn't changed at all. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is collaborative editing. And uh, this video demonstrates how collaborative editing works uh, inside Confluence. Excellent table allows multiple users to uh, enter a spreadsheet and edit those uh, spreadsheets natively. So you might see on the top right corner, a number of people actually uh, getting in the conference page and uh, by the different cells, you can identify which person on, a, on which cell and, uh, and, and then you can actually just find out who is working on, uh, who is working where for data quality and control as well. So you can see uh, multiple users have edited the page at the same time and uh, all these pages, uh, all these options are uh, different, uh, what people have done have uh, been saved in uh, excellent table. Now this is available right now in two options. One is uh, the excellent, uh, AdTech is hosting the service. And if you are on data center users and you cannot connect to the, um, ad tech service, you can make a copy of ad tech service and host it internally for your users as well. Um, excellent table also has uh, data validation and conditional formatting. So data validation and conditional formatting are perhaps two of the easiest ways to maintain data sanity and data hygiene in your confluence. So data validation works the same way in your spreadsheets as anything else. So just select the uh, cells that you want to apply, uh, the data validations, enter the inputs and your uh, cells are uh, validated. So just select, go to data, uh, data validation and uh, choose the different criteria, whether it's uh, numbers or any particular value that you want to enter or if you want to uh, clear the validation, you can do it as well. Um, in conditional formatting, uh, it works in a very similar way. So conditional formatting is uh, basically highlighting the cells, uh, cells based on the value in those cells uh, or value in certain cells. So a very unique uh, use of this tool was, uh, uh, of these two tools was uh, done by a hospital in New York last year during the peak of uh, uh, the New York pandemic. Uh, the New York COVID pandemic. So they were trying to find out how many uh, people were spending time in COVID wards and uh, how many people like doctors and nurses were spending time in COVID wards. Uh, however, the data entry was messed up. So some people were entering data in minutes, some people were entering the data in hours, uh, some people were entering the data in uh, half day or something like that. So using data validation, uh, the hospital was easily able to maintain the data sanity. And uh, after that, they started using conditional formatting to quickly and easily find out who, which person was spending more time in uh, COVID watch and uh, able to isolate them uh, pretty quickly. Uh, all right. Uh, now I'll move on to some uh, certain conference specific features. So, these are the features, I mean, till now what we have seen is the features of a normal spreadsheet, but uh, these features work only on uh, excellent table. So the first thing is versioning. 
uh, whenever you create a new version with the uh, sorry whenever you save an any excellent table you basically are creating a new version and you have the option now to uh, go to any of your previous save and uh, if you want you can actually restore that version uh, whenever you want so and the second uh, second thing is uh, any ed you can protect your cells and your sheets. So if you have uh, cells that you want to, um, sometimes you, your teammates might make mistakes and edits in your cells. So if you want to protect those cells, you can just uh, do a right click and protect. So you, the other users won't be able to uh, pro uh, edit those cells. You can either protect, also protect the sheets as well. Uh, so in case of a protected sheet, the users won't be able to edit or delete a protected sheet uh, as well. You can also hide or uh, delete the rows and column headers. So uh, for example, uh, you can also do a scroll lock on these column headers. So if you have, uh, if you're trying to uh, navigate on a very large um, confluence table, you can add, uh, hide the rows and columns. And this hidden, uh, sorry, uh, this freezing of rows and columns would also uh, work in the view mode as well. You can also try to hide uh, row headers and column headers. And if you save this uh, spreadsheet tool uh, and exit uh, excellent table to the uh, conference view mode, you might notice that the excellent table, uh, the row and column headers uh, have disappeared. And uh, these, uh, now, you know, now you are not uh, sure whether this, has, this you have made in uh, normal conference or if you have made in, uh, uh, you know, using a spreadsheet tool. So it's very easy to uh, create uh, uh, multiple, uh, uh, it's very easy to take uh, printouts of this because in that, uh, in a printout, uh, these things won't come like uh, the top and uh, top headers and the uh, bottom headers uh, or the sheet names. So a very uh, unique way, a lot of uh, our Organization, uh, sorry, a lot of our customers use it is to create uh, bills and invoices. So, with in Confluence, they have templates for bills and invoices. They put in excellent table to do a quick calculation, and once they have done that, you can uh, just take a printout or an export to PDF, and uh, your invoices come in a very uh, quick and unique way. Plus, all your uh, invoices are stored in Confluence as well. So I'll quickly move on to uh, what are the upcoming features. Um, we are working on some features uh, right now. And uh, the first of them is settings. So settings would have uh, things like multiple currencies, uh, multiple date formats. So as Australia has uh, a different currency and uses a different date format from uh, US, you should be able to use that as well. Um, Multiple separators and formatting styles, uh, you, you can also use in your numbers. And finally, native display, uh, so that your confluence tables, uh, if you have an option to work, uh, uh, to create a native HTML display of your uh, excellent table tables. Now, uh, the first two of these, uh, the, the first two like currencies and separators uh, should come out uh, by end of this month and native display would uh, take a, a bit more time. Uh, the second is uh, one click migration. If you are trying to migrate from server or data center to cloud or uh, from cloud to data center, uh, you can have, uh, uh, we are trying to provide one click migration for, uh, uh, for, for these uh, projects as well. Uh, the first part of this was to create a single code base for cloud in DC, and that is already done. So now if you have any um, feature, uh, sorry, uh, if any feature is released going forward, it will be released simultaneously for cloud and data center. Uh, we are also working on custom templates, pivots, uh, native graphs and charts. So 
all these features um, should be available by end of this year. All right, thank you, everyone. Thanks very much, Shadow. Um, yeah, impressive as always. And yeah, I think, um, uh, yeah, whenever thinking about these type of tools, um, it really is, it always comes back to yeah, productivity. Can the team get what they want? Can they have that single source of truth? Um, and yeah, it's great that, um, oh, we've got products and teams like you guys that um, really allow us to extend the platform. So yeah, look, I'd like to really thank you for your time today. I uh, hope the audience finds that useful um, and informative. And yeah, if you have any questions or queries regarding um, anything that we've discussed today or anything at Lassian, yeah, please reach out to myself um, or Jackson. But yeah, if you're in Australia, please reach out to us and uh, yeah, we'll be able to help you out. So thanks very much for your time, guys. Thanks very Appreciate much, everyone. It. And thank you, Michael. Cheers.